this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly. In today's amazing video, we are going to be doing finally an out of the box review on the OMP Hobby M2 V2 micro helicopter. Okay, so I got my first shipment of these in. Got a couple of them sitting here. Uh, of course, I got to be a butthead and show them off, right? Um, and then I've got one here that I that I have removed the. The, the, the packaging film on because we're going to pop it open. Now, I'm really, really excited, guys. I, I know this isn't necessarily a new product to hit the shelf, so to speak. Um, but I will say this. I haven't seen much buzz about them. And I have no idea as to why. So we're going to find out right now. So let's go ahead and let's pop this bad boy open. Now, these usually, I think they retail um, about 350 you, plus or minus your shipping costs and whatnot. Um, give you a quick look on the box here. Box the packaging on this thing is on a different level. You guys think Goblin helicopters are nice? I mean, these are right up the same alley, right? As far as the packaging and everything goes, they offer it looks to be three different colors. The nice part is, is they actually mark on the box what colors you got. In my case, I got the they call it uh, racing yellow for this kit, um, but it gives you just some overall specs and information here on the box. This is probably one of the craziest designs I have ever seen on a micro heli. I mean, okay, let, let's let's be fair. It's kind of got the same design as things like, uh, uh, like, the, like the Align 100, right? It's got a, a brushless tail motor, um, but kind of like the Goblin, what is it, the Comet or the Fireball, where the main shaft is connected right into the motor. Uh, the new logo mini machine. This is, I mean, they're almost identical, right? But what really blew me away with this one is the quality and just how it feels. And you guys, once you buy one, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. But so here we go. We, we remove a little filming. Let's pop the box open here. This gave me chills, guys. When this when this hit my door, I had a smile from ear to ear, like a little kid on Christmas Day, and. My wife looked at me like I was five years old. It was the funniest thing, but I was just so excited. So, this material here that the, that the helicopter comes in, I don't want to say it's a styrofoam. Um, I don't know. It's it's almost like a like a synthetic fiber styrofoam of some sort. Very very nice. Um, this is probably one of the only micro helis I've seen out there that comes with a case for you to carry around. I mean, I could take this. I could throw this in a lake right now. Guess what? It's just going to float. And I know this because I actually set one of these uh, in my little pool I have in my backyard the other day, and it just floats. So, like, you know, carry your heli around. Be safe and everything. This takes care of it. So that's that's already an immediate, is it worth the price? Absolutely. The case alone, I'm in love with. Okay, so we're going to pop that open. And here, here's the thing that kills me, you guys. Here's what kills me. Most would say, hey, let's make uh, a nice styrofoam case where the lid just pops off, right? No. They had to go an extra step, and they actually put hinges on this freaking thing. So I actually have a hinged, again, I'm not sure the material, synthetic styrofoam case. So this helicopter is always going to have somewhere to sleep and somewhere to stay safe at all times. Perfect, right? So looking at the contents of the package here. You'll see we've got the machine. We'll look at that in just a moment. Um, they do, like like most things, they give you a bunch of extra parts. Um, I will say, like most micro helis, it bums me out that they don't give you the parts that you actually break. Blades, tail blades, uh, pitch link arms, things like that are usually what you break in a crash with these guys. However, they do supply you with what appears to be an additional... Uh, I'm going to assume that's the main shaft and an, an extra uh, feathering shaft, spindle shaft, if you will. They give me three extra servo arms. Kind of nice. I'm assuming maybe with... This has uh, metal geared servos, so I'm assuming maybe in small crashes you probably strip the servo arms as compared to the servo. So that's probably why we got the extra arms. Uh, and it looks like just a little assortment of zip ties and some extra screws and whatnot. So, okay, that's nice. We'll keep that. That's handy. Um, this, I'm going to recommend not eating, as always. I think this is just to keep the heli fresh. I don't, I don't really know why they need that, but, again, I'm a scientist, so. Um, instruction, little instruction packet. 
Now, from what I understand, um, this thing should be relatively simple to program. I will be using it with Spectrum, so I do have to supply a Spectrum satellite, one DSMX modulation uh, satellite. I should be able to plug that bad boy in, go through the binding procedures, and then take in mind, um, in, in the next upcoming videos, we are going to walk through and do a complete setup guide on this machine. We're going to take it out to the field, do our test flights, and we'll actually get a real final review on, on everything. But just right out of the box, I, I already have the jitters. I can't wait. So let, let's get the machine out here real quick. Again, got my hinges. Close that bad boy right up. Boom. Go throw it in the pool. All right, so here we go. We've got the M2 version 2, and this thing just, when you, when you hold this in your hands, it doesn't feel like most micro helicopters. It feels like a very robust, insanely well-designed uh, 500, 600, 450. I mean, I can feel like I chuck this at the wall. And nothing's going to hurt it. It just feels so solid. I don't know how else to put that into words. But again, once you guys get your kit, you'll you'll, you'll understand what it, what it is I'm talking about. So, um, I love how on the canopy here, very, very nice, sleek design. It says, turn me on. Which, I don't know if that's meant to be seductive or not, but hey, it's working for me. Again, they offer the different colors. Now, the cool thing is, is if you order it uh, in the different colors based upon availability, um, the, the, the motor and, and the, the anodized metal also comes matched with the canopy. So, you know, you get the, the purple. You're going to have the, everything's going to be purple, right? So, that's sweet. I think that's actually really, really cool for those of you that like to theme out your stuff. Uh, but let's talk some features, okay? So, we're just kind of getting an overall look here. They, they even, I mean, seriously, they even got the metal on the tail. Um, you have the, what, what do you want to call this, uh, the diamond or, or hexagonal tail boom, whatever the, the word they use for it. So, so we got no boom struts anymore, which is fantastic. And you can feel how rigid that tail is. That tail ain't going nowhere. And it is metal. That is a metal tail boom, right? It is not plastic. Okay, so we're moving up. You can see that the motor is exposed. Great cooling, by the way. I mean, you're going to get good performance that way. Landing skids. I believe these are like a like a plastic of some sort, but very rigid filling, which I like because if they had carbon fiber, I think their first model may have had like carbon fiber ones or something. Again, when, when you have a crash, you want parts to give and take away some of the force. And, and so I really like that. I, I appreciate that. Get a quick look at this side real, real fast. I mean, it looks very symmetrical, to be honest, on each side. I mean, you really you really don't see any differences. Uh, the main rotor looks just... It's all it's all metal, right? I don't see any plastic parts. Um, the pitch link arms, I believe, here are a plastic of some sort. Those don't appear to be metal. So, let's go ahead. Uh, blades, um, I think these are... I want to say those are plastic blades as well. They're not carbon fiber or anything. Which, again, it's fine. These micro helis, um, I've seen a couple of flights. It even comes with a little blade holder. Isn't that adorable? Um, I've seen a couple of flights on these, and it looks like these things can handle a beating. So I'm going to assume with the plastic blades, the flex is probably really good. Um, the bounce back is probably really good, and it seems like they can, they can really handle I'm going to assume they're going to come out with upgrades, right? You can get some carbon blades or whatnot. But let's go ahead. Let's pop the canopy off. Now, I will say this, guys, as always with any helicopter, canopies are a pain in the ass, and all they ever do is chip, crack, and break. I have not experienced a single helicopter in the 11 plus years I've been making these videos for you guys where uh, canopies aren't a pain in the ass, right? So just be very delicate, be very careful. Um, one thing that I found that was really cool is the canopy has this little tongue groove right here, and... Uh, the first time I took the canopy off, I went to go put it back on, and like a dummy, I didn't check, but there's actually a little slot right here for it. I started putting the canopy on with the tongue groove underneath that, and it actually, again, cracked my canopy, and I'm like, gosh dang it, I've had this thing out of the box for five minutes, and I already broke it. Um, so let's take a look here, guys. This is, this is a unique setup. I mean, we're talking, you've got all metal servos. 
beautiful, beautiful looking servos. Um, and it's all built, right? It doesn't look like I have anything to do besides program it in my radio, go out and have a good time, probably make some adjustments uh, here and there, you know, to tweak my values and whatnot. Swash plate looks absolutely robust. I love the look of this swash plate. Looks really, really good. Um, <clears throat> now, from what I've researched and read about this, is is this is cool here. Okay, so this is an integration of a fly barless control system and an ESC. It's almost like they're stacked. I mean, obviously you've got yeah, you've got the silver, you've got the black, but it's, it's like they're sandwiched into one. I think this is probably the coolest freaking thing I've ever seen. If they could make large size helicopters integrate an ESC and a fly barless system, you know how much easier our jobs would be with building machines, wiring, uh, cleanliness overall of the machine. I don't know if that's practical, but it's freaking, it's badass. I apologize for the language, but I really like this. Now, to my understanding, this is kind of similar to um, the BSTEC system or the AR systems from Spectrum. Um, in in the in the the terminology of that when you do your programming and stuff you can just push the set button here and it'll have you go through a series of uh, light up sequences Let's see if we can get a shot in on that it'll give you a series of light up sequences and then you simply use a dedicated control whether it be aileron elevator rudder um, to to set your parameters and your limits and your adjustments or answer yes or no questions and whatnot. Um, so it should be relatively easy. Anybody out there that knows the Beast X system or the Spectrum-based AR7200s and whatnot, you guys should have zero issues. Um, one thing that kind of killed me a little bit, it's not the end of the world. I don't care much for the connections that are pre-soldered on here. Um, I'm not set up for them, right? So I got this badass little heli in the mail. I want to go out and fly it. Well, shoot, I can't. I can't even charge the damn battery, so i got to order up a special cable or make my own. Um, what I'm actually probably going to do, um, I don't recommend doing if you guys aren't experienced with soldering, but I might actually just replace my leads with maybe uh, uh, an EC3 or I might even just go JST. Um, something small, something simple, keep everything light, but uh, I really don't want to wait seven days of shipping to, to be able to charge my battery pack. Um, the little battery pack, by the way, comes in the helicopter. It's got kind of similar to like the, the goblins, how it's got this little pull and release lever. Um, I did find it kind of hard to get this battery out. Um, that lever is really stubborn. Um, what I ended up actually doing, and it might just be because I got to work it in a little bit, but I just took a little tool and then I can just kind of pull on the lever like that. And then, boom, my, my pack will come right out. Um, it's stiff. It is very stiff. So be careful, guys. Don't break it and don't force it. But here's our little battery pack right here. Comes in the machine. It's got the Velcro. It looks like it's already adhered on the back. Um, they do, of course, sell the battery pack separate. So if you want to pick up four, five, six of them or whatever so you can make a, a whole day out of it. Um, go ahead and do so. It looks like it's a 650 milliamp pack. It looks very well constructed. Again, I haven't had any testing on it yet, but I would say uh, solid and sound. I mean, I'm very happy with that. So, um, what else? What else can we possibly look at in, on here? Um, the tail, again, like I said, it's its own uh, brushless motor. I really like how I would have been mad if the tail was one of those tails that uh, th they just pressure fit on or it has like a little groove on a shaft and you have to do a set screw, that would have ruined this entire machine, but no. Instead, they've got it pinned down with two hex bolts, which I think is phenomenal. Um, again, I have seen flight videos of this thing. Um, now, of course, with it having a motor for the tail, it, it's not gonna work the same as a standard machine where you've got an actual slider and adjustable pitch with a fixed RPM. This one's going to be speeding up and slowing down to counterbalance and do all its things. So the sounds it makes is, you know, view, view, view. like it makes a lot of different sounds. But it looks as though with the flights that I have seen with this machine, that the tail just is a bully. It looks like it handles everything you can throw at it. So 
Pretty excited, guys. Pretty stoked. Let's get one last really good look at everything. Very well constructed. Um, my wife is not a very avid flyer, but when she's seen this, the first question she asked me is, where the heck is mine and why isn't it purple? So now i got to get another one on order and, and get her a, a purple one because she absolutely wants one. This is one of those things. I mean, I think it's going to be great for, for uh, beginner pilots, advanced pilots, of course. Uh, your lazy Sunday flights, instead of packing up and going to the field, you can bust out this little guy, throw in some packs uh, in the backyard. And uh, I am overall impressed. So, again, guys, stay tuned to the channel. Uh, in the next couple of videos, I am going to walk through and do the setup series. Ooh, sorry, I got the hiccups. Uh, I am going to walk through and do the setup series on this machine using a Spectrum-based platform, of course. I'll be using a Spectrum radio. Uh, but we'll go through how to program it, how to bind it. Um, you know, get it out and just get our initial test flights done. And then we'll talk a little bit more about programming, tweaking the system. Um, that way, in case you guys run into any issues, you've got a helpful uh, a resource to come to. So, as always, guys, thank you so very much for watching. Feel free to comment and subscribe. And remember, if Freddy can fly, so can you.